it actually brings us to our conversations today uh, about, I mean, really, as you say, kind of, I think, the anger and tenor about the debate over immigration <laughs> to what is a historic opportunity for hundreds of thousands of young undocumented immigrants. They've been lining up now across the country trying to apply for what's known as deferred action. Uh, the program goes into effect today. It gives nearly two million illegal immigrants who are brought to the United States as children a chance to avoid deportation for two years. They can obtain work permits and social security numbers, even apply for financial aid for college. The program, you'll remember, was announced by President Obama uh, back in June, uh, came after Congress failed to pass the DREAM Act. Here's what he said then. This is not a path to citizenship. It's not a permanent fix. This is a temporary stopgap measure that lets us focus our resources wisely while giving a degree of relief and hope to talented, driven, patriotic young people. The president used the authority to change the Homeland uh, Department of Homeland Security's policy. Republicans say you're giving amnesty basically to illegal immigrants without Congress's approval. We're going to bring in uh, Congressman Luis Gutierrez in just a moment. He's from Illinois. First, though, we're going to talk to Dan Stein. He's the president of the Federation for American Immigration Reform against the policy, and he joins us live uh, from D.C. this morning. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks for being with us. We certainly yeah. appreciate it. I know you're not a fan of this program, but it's, it's happening now anyway. Uh, Governor Romney uh, has has said this about the president's executive order. Listen. Some people have asked if I will let stand the president's executive order. The answer is that I will put in place my own long-term solution that will replace and supersede the president's temporary measure. As president, I won't settle for stopgap measures. I'll work with Republicans and Democrats to build a long-term solution. So that's a bit vague. What would you like to see happen to this group of young people whose parents brought them across the border? Well, for about the last 25 years, we've been hoping that uh, the, the parents and their kids would respect U.S. immigration law and not be here, obviously. Uh, Congress can't legislate around the idea that the rule of law is never going to be respected. And so the president, who said for three years, Soledad, he said for three years, I don't have the legal authority to do this. But here it is about six months before the election, and all of a sudden he's claiming this brand new unconstitutional authority to create a whole new immigration category and then run ads on Spanish language TV trying to take credit for it. Now, in principle, the idea behind the DREAM Act might have made sense, keeping in mind Congress has now rejected it twice, if in fact it had been accompanied with a balanced set of reform measures to curtail overall immigration downstream and actually begin enforcing the law so we didn't replicate the problem. But what the president is now doing is on his own motion, own authority, just saying, I have the right to rewrite the law, ignore the law. He puts him so in. So you're, you're, you're clearly annoyed with the president. And you, well, you also remember, said you, you, you would hope that the, the parents and the kids themselves would respect the rule of law. That's what well, you just we, said. But what, what would your solution be today? I mean, because obviously, I'm going to tell you, as you mentioned, last 25 years, the people are not returning in mass or self-hoarding in mass back to Mexico. So what would you do now with children whose parents brought them across the border? Order, and now they have no documents and they're in the country illegally right now. Well, I would do what most countries do, which is if you give people an amnesty, what you say is you have six months to get your affair and orders in ple order. And please understand that you will get your education back in your home country where you're a citizen and you can bloom where you're planted. The, the basic principle of the rule of law and the fact that it's respected is why immigrants have wanted to come to this country for 200 years. If we abandon the core principle, and allow the process to be usurped by an executive who says, I'm just not going to enforce the law, and taxpayers will pay. They don't seem to care about fraud. They, the waivers, there's not even an interview requirement. And then, solely, what happens, as you pointed out last hour, the president is giving a data, creating a database, but he can't guarantee any future immigration status. So, so in a sense, he's, 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 he's over-promising something he can't deliver. Let's talk it, about that with Congressman Luis Gutierrez, who joins us as well. Um, two things I want to ask you, Congressman. We just heard from Mr. Stein, bloom where you're planted. You get six months, and then you should just go home and, and try to, to get your degree there. It would be his uh, strategy. You obviously don't think uh, that that's a, a workable strategy. Um, why not? Well, look, Soledad, these uh, young people are much more American than they are immigrant. Anybody that's going to go out to the lines at Navy Pier here in Chicago and interview them is going to see that stark reality. So what we're doing is that kind of like the paperwork is catching up with the reality of 
their uh, of their status here in the United States of There's America. Some they came as children. They're not responsible for 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 being here in this country. So what the president has said is, look, let's use our enforcement on on really criminal alien foreigners here in this country, and let's allow these people and. So, Linda, I would like to say the DREAM Act was passed in the House of Representatives, 216 to 208. Fifty-five senators two weeks later uh, uh, voted for cloture. But the Republicans insisted on 60 votes. So both the Senate and the House, in the majority, have already let, let, voted to adopt the Let DREAM me Act. ask you a quick question about this paperwork thing, right? There is a concern that if you fill out paperwork uh, and then there's a, a new president comes into office, and we heard from Mitt Romney what he said about this specifically, is, yes. is kind of vague. Well, now you've actually gone from being undocumented to being documented by yourself in some capacity uh, and in theory yes. maybe you could someone could use those documents to then deport you correct I mean isn't that a risk yeah that, um, that is certainly a risk it is not something that realistically is potentially going to happen look sort of that <laughs> those kids are going to line up by the thousands today uh, by the hundreds of thousands they will receive their work permits here's what we've learned in America if you live in secrecy if you live in the shadows then you are truly at risk of being deported and harmed by the government the young people have gone out there shown who they are spoken to you in the press and shown America two-thirds of Americans are agree with the president's decision. Uh, uh, the fact is in the Latino community, people are ecstatic to see that young people and that there is a reversal of the policies of deportation, deportation, and deportation. They are American in everything but a piece of paper, Cong and they're lining up across America to get that piece of America. It's an irreversible process. Cong and let me just say, they're calling my office, they're in line, you're going to see an irreversible process that's going to lead to their parents one day receiving their documentation. We're obviously going to talk to a lot of those young people. Uh, Congressman Luis Gutierrez joining us, and also Dan Stein, the president of FAIR, the Federation for American Immigration Reform, uh, joining us as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Got to take a break, but still ahead this morning, it was a massive response to an epic economic collapse. Three years later, both sides are still arguing about the stimulus and whether or not it worked. Going to talk to the author of a new book who said it transformed America and American politics.